Thank you, Steve. That, that really was um, inspiring. It's a bit hard to follow something like that, really, especially when I've got the, uh, the kind of the, the science bit, the boring bit. Um, but it is important because um, it's important that we do have a recap on what we've achieved as an organisation. I mean, what, what Steve's talked about is what you, what you can achieve as a team. And, and we are one team as an organisation, aren't we? Um, and I was really, really taken with a lot of what Steve has said today and how how relevant that is to us. It's a very different environment that we're working in, undoubtedly. Um, you know, I can't imagine working under the pressure, if you like, of, of a World Cup rugby final. But we all work under pressure every single day, don't we? It's just a different kind of pressure, and it's just a different kind of team. Um, some of the things that Steve said around you know, world-class performance, I mean, we're a high-performing organisation, so that's really relevant to us. Um, everybody contributing... Um, Energizers and energy sappers was really interesting. I think everybody can identify with that. And I think, again, it's one of those things you can take back and think, hmm, am I an energizer or am I an energy sapper? And, and perhaps share that with your teams because I think it would be really interesting for people to just reflect a little bit on, on their roles in teams. Um, and things like a code of conduct. That's not talking about the code of conduct for the trust. That's in your team. That's about how you operate as a team. How do you work? How are you going to function successfully? And what's everybody's role within that? Um, so really, really fascinating insight for me and, and very, very relevant to what we do. And some of the things that you said, Steve, really resonated with our leadership behaviours, which is kind of what I'm going to talk about and how we've, we've developed those behaviours. Because things like sharing the vision is really what, what Steve's been talking about. Everybody understanding what the goal is, engaging the team, everybody being involved, everybody understanding what their role is. So there's loads of really, really relevant um, links between what Steve has said and what, what we've been doing. So I'm going to talk about what's happened in the last year. This time last year, were some of you here at the launch event last year? I can see some very familiar faces. This time last year, it was all about lollipop moments, wasn't it? We had um, our video from Drew Dudley, and we talked about lollipop moments. Hopefully, even if you weren't here, you will have seen that video, because it's been part of the, um, the employee awareness sessions that, that we've had, and it's available on Staff Zone. Um, and that's all about, uh, a lot. if you're not sure, a lollipop moment is all about that moment where you have an impact on somebody because of what you say, what you do, or how you behave. And that is relevant to every single one of us. And the principle of leadership for all is about every single one of us demonstrating those leadership behaviours and understanding that whether, we, whether we're um, interacting with a patient, whether it's with a team member or somebody else that we work with across the trust or outside the trust, it's that impact and how we behave and how we demonstrate those leadership behaviours that can make a difference and really, really demonstrate that great patient care that is what we're ultimately trying to achieve. <coughs> so, just a bit of background, again, just to remind us why, why we're here, why we decided to do this. The Trust has had um, a strategic objective around developing a culture of leadership, and that leadership being relevant to every part of the organisation in every single role. And that's particularly important, as Karen said earlier, in the environment that we're working in now. Um, things aren't going to get any easier in the NHS. The, the change that we, we go through is constant, isn't it? And in order for us to be the best organisation and have the best um, performance, we need to ensure that we're continually developing every member of staff. How did we do it? We used the National Healthcare Leadership Framework and then adapted it for ourselves. And uh, I think everybody by now will be familiar with our model. Hopefully that's really familiar to everybody. Um, our nine leadership behaviours, I'm not going to go into lots of detail about them because you should all be aware of them from, um, from your appraisals already, but they should hopefully start to be becoming something that you're familiar with. I think what we recognise is that we're in year one. This is year one of a, a long, long programme. This is about how we change the culture in our organisation and how we, how we strive for that continuous improvement for everybody. So we know that, that these words and these behaviours won't be everyday parlance at the moment, but that's what we're moving towards. We don't expect to get it all done in one year. This is about moving incrementally and making those, those small improvements that, that Steve talked about. So those are our behaviours. We should all be familiar with the five levels of leadership behaviours from core through to exemplary and, and how those apply. And hopefully when you've had your appraisal, you'll have had that discussion and you'll now be aware of which behaviours apply to your role 
and how you might want to develop those either within your role or if you want to, if you have aspirations to move into other roles or up to um, other levels, how you might de develop those leadership behaviours moving forward. You should also be familiar with the talent map. That's become something that, again, we introduced as part of appraisals this year. Um, having that discussion about um, performance alongside um, future readiness to move and um, potential, um, alongside those discussions about what your personal aspirations are. So we should be, we should be seeing the development of those, those talent maps for individuals, but then also at team level. So again, what's, what's the story been so far? Two launch events last year. Um, we had a £5,000 grant from the Leadership Academy to support the rollout of our leadership model, which was really great because it showed some, some real recognition from the Leadership Academy that we were doing some good work and they wanted to support us. Um, we've had 100% of line managers in the Trust trained on how to use the model. That was such an important thing for us to achieve because we recognised that having talent conversations as part of appraisal was a new concept. And again, I'm not going to be... I'm not going to be dishonest and say everyone's appraisal will have been fantastic and their talent conversation will have been perfect. We're working on it. We're improving <laughs> it all the time. And I'll talk about evaluation in a moment. But it was really important that everybody was trained who was going to do an appraisal to ensure they knew what the expectation was and they knew how the new model was going to work. Um, we had employee se awareness sessions for all employees. And that information has been available on Staff Zone, along with lots of other resources which again has been important because we didn't want to just do this and then leave people without any support. That support is there via Staff Zone through um, guides for managers, guides for employees. We've got the framework of development that you can go and look at and see what kind of development might be appropriate for your role. So lots of, there, lots of material there to support you. So as I said, the appraisal incorporated talent conversations. All the paperwork was updated. Um, and 98% of our staff have, uh, have this year had an appraisal, which is a fantastic achievement. Um, we've got a great track record with appraisal, and it really shows our commitment to wanting to develop and support our staff, um, on, on, not just on an annual basis, but on, on an ongoing basis. Um, the point of bringing in leadership for all and the point of bringing in talent conversations is trying to improve the quality of those appraisals and trying to ensure that there is a real focus on developing every single member of staff in the trust. We've had talent management reviews in each service and in each division. Again, I think it's fair to say that's been a bit of a learning experience for every service. That's where they've brought together all of those talent maps for individuals, collated them for the service and started to understand what the skills, the, the, the breadth of skills are in the service what the opportunities for development are and what the opportunities for potential and for, for really sort of using the skills within that service are moving forward. We're, the next step, which will be this month, will be to bring all of those together at a trust level. And that will give us a fascinating insight into the spread of talent across our trust. We'll be able to say, this is how our talent is spread out and this is, this is where our potential lies and this is where we've got great core members of staff performing and able to be developed within their role. So it, it's, it's going to give us a fascinating um, insight into that. Um, we've also got succession plans now in place in each service. That's really important. It's the kind of thing that managers do. Managers think about, oh, well, you know, I need to make sure that so-and-so knows how to do this because you know, we need to spread the talent around, we need to spread the skills around. But actually, we've now identified what, the key role, what key roles there are in every single service and what would happen if tomorrow somebody decided to leave who was in one of those key roles. Where are we going to fill, where are we going to fill that post from? Where, where can we do it on a temporary basis? Where can we do it by developing somebody over a one, two, three-year period? And that's really important in terms of our business continuity and our ability to respond as a, as a team, as a service, as an organisation. Um, all of this has been recognised by the Northwest Leadership Academy and um, we've been asked to, I attended recently the uh, Northwest Academy uh, talent management event where we were asked to showcase what we'd done. And again, my message was, I don't think we've got it, I don't think we've got it cracked yet. We've still got a lot to do. 
but they really, really recognised, and there were other trusts there who were, were staggered by what we had done with such relatively small resources as well. The fact that we've used the resources that we've got in-house with a very small grant from the Leadership Academy, and we've made all of this progress. So it's, it's, it's a real feather in our cap as a trust that we've done this. And we've had some nominations for the Northwest Academy Leadership Awards, which is really, really great, because that's starting to show that people are are really pushing forward with leadership and really wanting to, again, showcase what we've achieved externally. So we've evaluated what we've done. We did an appraisal audit um, where we randomly sampled 5% of the trust um, to look at the quality of um, the appraisals and look at the um, quality of the talent conversations that had taken place. We also did um, a staff online survey um, to review how the process had gone for you and give you the opportunity to give us some feedback. We had some really positive feedback, particularly in relation to um, the option to have that career, dis career aspiration discussion, people feeling that they've, they've had an opportunity to talk about what they want to achieve in their careers. Um, also that they found it very motivating. I think we've also had some feedback that says, A, the paperwork needs to be reviewed and... We've heard that. We've tried to incorporate it for the interim appraisals and we'll certainly be looking at it for the annual appraisals. It's clearly too long. And I think, to be fair, the first year, it was a struggle, wasn't it, in terms of you got a lot of new information to assimilate and then apply into the appraisal. So we need to think about how we can support everybody better in that moving forward. Um, and we, we've taken on board all of that feedback so that we can continually improve that process. So what next? We've already talked about um, the talent reviews that have taken place, um, but there's, there's more to think about in terms of how we <coughs> start to embed leadership. So we've got it in appraisal. We continue to work that through. That's an ongoing <coughs> process. But we now need to look at how we embed those leadership behaviours in our onboarding programme, which is how um, we bring new starters into the organisation, how we ensure that they're aware of leadership behaviours right from the start how we use it in our management development programme, because clearly um, any new line manager, um, and we, we provide the MDP for bands four to seven, needs to understand how they can need to demonstrate those leadership behaviours themselves, but how they can develop those in their team members as well. And then embedding the, these behaviours through any other work streams that we do. We're talking about leadership for all as a way of changing our cultures, how we, how we want people to behave. We therefore need to get leadership behaviours everywhere. You'll start to see it popping up in the bulletin every now and again. You know, we might have a leadership behaviour of the month or something really exciting like that. Um, but we'll also, we also need to look at some of the big programmes that we've got, like Transforming um, Care Together, the, the, the transformation programme, and ensuring that not only are we highlighting how that develops leadership behaviours as we implement it, but how important it is to use those leadership behaviours to transform our services because, as we've said, change isn't going away. We need to respond to that change. We, we do that by transforming the services that we're delivering. We do that as a team and we do that by every single member of the team contributing. And today, later on, we will be talking about three new initiatives that we'll be launching in 2017. I'm not going to talk about them in any detail because I don't want to steal anyone's thunder who is on um, after the break, but, but they are um, a new mentoring scheme, um, the introduction of coaching skills, and the introduction of leadership masterclasses. So these are our three big new initiatives for 2017, and you'll be hearing about those um, from colleagues after the break. And that was all I wanted to say at this point on where we are, because that was just a recap of where we're up to. But what I would like to do now, and you didn't know this was going to happen, is to go over to you. There's a little bit of... Um, of involvement now from you and uh, audience participation. Two things. Number one, if you were here last year, you will remember that we did a Wordle. Do you all know what a Wordle is, where you put all the words up on the screen that people um, put forward? We did a Wordle around um, leadership. Well, we did two, one at each launch event. And what we captured was, what, what did people think leadership meant at that point? Before we'd started this, what did people think leadership meant to them? We want to do this every year. Well, we want, if it works, we want to do it every year because we want to see whether people's perceptions of leadership have changed at all 
now we've introduced the model and now everybody's had that leadership conversation. So the first thing I'd like you to do, on your seats you should have a form that asks you to say in three words what does leadership mean to you. So either in the next ten minutes or during the break, um, that's right Ken isn't it, till the end of the break, yep. Um, if you can just take a couple of minutes to think about what leadership means to you personally and just put those three words and then at the end, as if by magic, we will produce a wordle from today. And we'll, we might be able to see if it looks any different from last year. So that's your first task. Your second task is we're going to do some actual breakout work now. It's only going to be for 10 minutes before the break. Um, I want you to think about the Leadership for All model. I've talked about it a little bit. You, you should be familiar with it. We've talked about how it's been used in the Trust. I'd really appreciate some feedback from you because, as I've said, we, we know there's still lots to learn about how we implement this model and how we use it. The most valuable feedback is from you as individuals who are using it in your appraisals <laughs> and in those talent conversations. So I'd really like you to think about what, from your perspective, is good about the model and what could we improve? Because I'm sure there are things that we could improve, but what's worked really well? What should we do more of and what have you really liked? What could we do differently? We're going to have four groups. We're going to have two in here, and we're just going to gather around um, a flip chart. And I've got some sort of leadership elves around, haven't I, to help me um, with this bit. And we've got two flip charts in here and two in two of the um, training rooms. So if I could ask the first three rows on each side to stay in here, and the right side go over to there, and then I feel like I'm on a plane, the left side go over to <laughs> there. And then the last two rows, if you can go out to two of the training rooms and you should have somebody to lead you out and come back in 10 minutes and we'll get the feedback. Thanks ever so much.